Shalom, shalom. This is your brother and your host, Joe Kennedy, coming to you live from Mombasa City in Kenya. This is the day that the Lord has made and put together that we should rejoice and be glad in it and in Him. Now, precious saints, I want you to understand, first of all, that I'm very grateful. A big shout and a salute to all my YouTube subscribers to all my YouTube viewers, to all my YouTube Financial Kingdom partners, a big shout to you, to all Kingdom Christ mystics that are out there watching in the name of Jesus. I want to salute on special salute to uh, Apostle Mary Chebet from EPZ, Redeemed House of Prayer in Kitangela. A big shout to you. I want to salute um my good friend evangelist um Danny Havner all the way from California United States of America God bless you sir from I know you'll be watching this but I want to salute Ruth all the way from China Ruth my good friend Grace uh Catherine and the husband in Nairobi and all of you I want to salute Simon from Vineyard, my good friend. I want to salute my co-pastor and friend, a brother whom I love, Pastor Patrick Bosaka, son of fire. The Lord bless you. I want to salute uh, Vivons in Christ. God bless you. I want to salute uh, Apostle Samuel Ome and the prophetess, the lioness of Nigeria, the prophetess Christiana Ome from Christ Restoration Mandate and all those family from Christ Restoration Mandate that will be watching this video. I want to salute all of you by the grace of God. I want to make this special announcement that number one, beginning today, today, today from 4 p.m. as you watch this video, being on the 13th of May, 2022 today from 4 p.m. at Christ Restoration Mandate in Mombasa Baburim Tambo opposite Lexo Petro Station at Christ Restoration Mandate we have a women conference that begins today 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 and our guest minister would be prophetess Christiana Ume among many others uh myself by the grace of God I will be ministering in this conference Apostle Samuel Ume will be ministering in this conference. Pastor Isaac Asher will be ministering in this conference, among many others. So I'm inviting you. It begins today, and it will be ending on Sunday. Women Conference. And the theme of the conference is, Who is a Woman? So if you are around Mombasa and Baron, please, I request you to pick the numbers that will be appearing at the end of this video and contact so that you may be given direction to the venue may the lord bless you may the lord keep you now let's embark on my last episode teaching series i be i taught about witchcraft manipulations and how witchcraft has been uh one of the things that has created great damage to most lives and it has brought a lot of uh, disaster and casualties in the lives of people. Now today, like I said in the last episode, I will be tackling the message of black witchcraft. And I want to go a little bit deeper than the normal to explain this reality of black witchcraft. And please take your Bible, take your pen, take your book, notebook, or take your tablet or iPad, whichever gadget you will be using, or whichever material you'll be using for writing notes. Because today I'll be launching deeper and deeper and deeper. So please hear me as I hear God. Now, black witchcraft, beginning by this, black witchcraft originated in Africa. Like I said, we have black witchcraft and we have white witchcraft. I'm not in any way drawing the pattern lines of racism, but I want you to know as far as witchcraft is concerned, there are class 
of witchcraft, or rather classes of witchcraft. And we have the class of witchcraft in the occultic world known as black witchcraft. That's a class of witchcraft. And there's another class of witchcraft in the occultic world, uh, the occultic world of darkness known as white witchcraft. Now, let me handle black witchcraft as we trickle down in our message by the grace of God. Now, black witchcraft originated in Africa and is operated through the combination of juju and voodoo occultism. Now, today, in the world today, this is an art that is practiced all over the world. The spirits of black witches are the major entities guiding the manipulation of the destruction camp of witchcrafts, which houses the blind witches or those who have received the mark of destruction upon their foreheads. In other words, the black witches are occult messengers that operate in high and low places. And what do they do? They maim or kill as well as extract human blood for daily consumption of, of the rest or rather for the rest of the forces of darkness. And this happens all over the world to every race. It doesn't matter if you are black, white, purple, yellow, blue, green, or colorless. The art of black witchcraft can be operated by the spirit, and this is the most critical part that I want you to understand, can be operated by the spirit. Guess that this is going to shock you. The black art of black witchcraft can be operated shockingly and believably even by the spirit of a baby inside the womb of a mother. For instance, let me explain. For instance, a witch could initiate the baby in her womb, right? Into black witchcraft and consequently use such an unborn baby as an instrument which in the occultic world is called a torchlight. A baby can be used as a torchlight for, her, for witchcraft operations by this witch who is carrying the baby in her womb. Also, a little boy, I want you to understand, a little boy, right, a little boy or a little girl can also be used a little boy or a little girl can also be used in the same, same pattern as what? As an instrument for witchcraft where he or she plays the role of a torchlight. And this happens not only in Africa but all over the world uh, by people, right? This happens all over the world by people. You get me? So a little boy or, or, or girl can be initiated into the art of black witchcraft and be used as a torchlight. Now, listen to me, precious saints. There are many of such children now on earth. Many. After initiation, one will begin to attend to witchcraft meetings unconsciously attend to witchcraft meetings spiritually in different forms in a particular district based on his or her own rank. Then he will become an agent of destruction who feeds spiritually on human flesh and blood. Thus, in the day he is a friend, but when the night comes, he becomes an enemy. You get me? In the day, he's a friend to the prey. At night, he's an enemy to the one who was the friend in the day. This happens all over the world. Uh, now, listen to me. The, 
the three greatest wizards. All right? The three greatest wizards of black witches. Listen to me carefully. The three greatest wizards of black witches that lived on earth include the wizard of Ngoni. The wizard of Ngoni. From the tribe of Ngoni in East Africa. There are three greatest wizards wizards of black witches that lived on earth. And the first great wizard of black witchcraft that lived on earth is called the Wizard of Ngoni. N-G-O-N-I. The Wizard of Ngoni. And amazingly, the Wizard of Ngoni comes from the tribe of Ngoni, which is in East Africa. There is another wizard who is called the Wizard of Obulukuo. The Wizard of Obuluku. Obuluku. The Wizard of Obuluku. U-B-U-L-U-K-W. Obuluku. The Wizard of Obuluku. All right. Near Asaba of Nigeria. That's the second one. The third great wizard is called the Wizard of Ile Ife. The Wizard of Ile Ife also based in Nigeria. So there is the two wizards from Nigeria. The wizard of Obuluku, Obuluku in Nigeria from the Asaba of Nigeria and there is the wizard of Ile Ife in Nigeria. Those are two. And then we have the wizard of Ngoni which comes from the tribe of Ngoni in East Africa. If you belong to the tribe of Ngoni in East Africa, Eight of the countries bordering East Africa, you know there's a wizard in your tribe. Now listen to me. The art of black witchcraft, okay, all over the world is under the control of an Arahafa. An Arahafa. Okay? The black witchcraft all over the world is under the control of of what we call Arahafa, A R A H A T H A, Arahafa, which means the guardian spirit being, the guardian spirit being, who once appeared. Listen to me, these are things that I've done my research, I've studied, and I've been led analytically by the Holy Spirit to learning these things. So I know what I'm talking about. You can make your own study and research. You'll get these things. I'm teaching what is existing. Uh, this Arahafa, the spirit guardian being, he once appeared and lived physically in Ghana, in the nation of Ghana, and was known as Kofi Menu. Ask any Ghanaian about the wizard known as Kofi Menu, you will be told. Now, black witchcraft was also practiced in the ancient lands of Babylon, in Egypt, in Persia, in India, in Syria. And to shock you, black witchcraft was also practiced in Israel. But in Israel, King Josiah, who is, who his reign was 640 to 609 BC, abolished the art, or rather abolished this art of black witchcraft, King Josiah. That we find in 2 Kings 23, verse 24. He abolished the practice of black witchcraft in Israel, King Josiah. Furthermore, through the influence, I want you to listen to me, through the influence 
through the influence, all right? Through the influence, right? Through the influence, okay? And power of Christianity and based on the commandment of God, which says in Exodus 22, verse 18, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. All the categories of the art of witchcraft, now listen to me, all the categories of the art of witchcraft, all the categories, right? All the categories of the art of witchcraft, all the categories of the art of witchcraft, all of them, right? All these categories have serious, 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 serious issues, which I'm going to explain in a short while. I'm going to explain in a short while, in a short while. So bear with me in a short while. I'll be sharing all that. Yes, so like I was saying, um, that King Josiah, according to Second Kings 23-24, abolished this practice of black witchcraft in Israel. He abolished it. He abolished it. And I want you to understand something uh, that furthermore, the, through the influence of Christianity and the power of Christianity that is based on the commandment of God, which says in Exodus 22 verse 18, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Now listen to me. All the categories of the art of witchcraft were proclaimed as capital offense in England during those days through the Act of Parliament that was enacted in 1542, 1563, and 1604 AD, respectively. However, witchcraft has greatly revived now as we speak. Now as we speak in England, witchcraft is like drinking water in, in, in England. In Holy Scripture, all the categories of the art of witchcraft are totally condemned. Now according to Deuteronomy 18 verse 10 to 12, the Bible says, there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through fire. Listen to that. Or that uses divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulator with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, an abomination unto the Lord. That is Deuteronomy 18, verse 10 to 12. Now, let me say something about white witchcraft that most people are not familiar with. There is something we call white witchcraft. Now, the art of white witchcraft is another category of operation in the occultic world of darkness among the witches. White witchcraft is an occult practice which includes the art of fortune telling. Fortune telling is a white witchcraft. If you go to a fortune teller to tell about your future, that's white witchcraft. Geomancy, geomancy is another category of white witchcraft. Then we have another one which is called astral gemstone. That's another level of witchcraft. And then we have another one which is called occult mantras where they recite demonic, satanic incantations. They recite them. And as they repeated, as they repetitively, as they repetitively re repeat those incantations, they project the atmosphere to charge up for demonic and satanic manifestations. There's another one also called as Natal Astrology. There's another one also, which is white witchcraft, called Shadow Reading, 
where somebody can gaze into your shadow and read what is all about you. Hyponotism. There's another one which called hyponotism. Hyponotism. There's another one also which is a branch of white witchcraft known as psychonomy or physiognomy. Physiognomy. There's another one called palm street where they read palm. You place your hand and they're able to read your palm. By just observing through the palm of your hands, they're able to tell things about you. Things about your future. Things about your destiny. That is white witchcraft. There's another one called talismans. There's another one called oija boards. Tarot cards. There's another one called tarot cards. And the last one is crystal balls. To mention among many. Or rather among few. Now therefore, I want you to understand one who is even a one who is even illiterate can operate in the art of black witchcraft. You don't have to be intelligent to be practicing black witchcraft. There are so many illiterate, confused black witches around who practice black witchcraft. Now listen to me. One must be able to read and write before he can advance in the art of white witchcraft. He must be able to read and write before you advance in the ranks of white witchcraft. You have to be able to read because there's a lot of reading and chanting demonic chants that are done before you advance in the hierarchy of witchcraft. Now listen to me. Most of the techniques of this witchcraft or this demonic craft called white witchcraft are contained in occultic books of darkness. All right? Occultic books of darkness. Now, something I want you to understand is that when I mention the word occult, it does not denote satanic. Occult simply means concealed, hidden from the normal optic view. Anything hidden from the ordinary optic view of the normal eyesight, that thing is referred to as occult. Anything that cannot be viewed from the normal optical viewpoint of the ordinary human eye is considered as occultic in nature. It's something that is covered. The normal eye can't see it unless you go beyond the normal eye and engage or apply the third eye principle, which is the eyes of the spirit. Now, there is also the occult side of light, which has everything to do with God. And there's the occult side of Satan. So when I mention the word occult, don't think it is entirely satanic. There is the occult side of the kingdom of God. And that is to do with the things that the normal eye, the optical eye, cannot see. You have to be led by the eyes of the spirit to go beyond the ordinary eye to see that which is concealed from the ordinary optic view. So don't think occult. The statement, the word occult is not demonic, is not satanic. It simply means something that is concealed, it is hidden, it is veiled, from the normal optical viewpoint. So understand. Now, as we go, uh, this is why a white witch, please listen to me, this is why a white witch must be able to read and write in this regard. For you to advance in the white witchcraft, you must be willing and be able to read and learn and master reading ancient scripts. You must master and read ancient scripts that contain different languages and most witchcraft, occultic witchcraft books of darkness are written in ancient languages that are not modern day understood. Ancient languages, deep ancient languages. 
So you must be able to master these ancient languages so that you can be able to know the secret behind them. And for instance, many of the Ephesians who received Christ Jesus in the days of apostles, many of the Ephesians who received Christ in the days of apostles of Jesus, many of these Ephesians were white witches, if you didn't know. Many of them were white witches. The scriptures reported this to the letter. In Acts 19, verse 19, it says, many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. These books were occultic witchcraft books of darkness. They brought them and burned them. The Bible says, and they counted the price of them and found it to be 50,000 pieces of silver. All those books they burned, they burned, were costing at 50,000 pieces of silver. So count, if you're an arithmetic and if you're a mathematician, calculate 50,000 pieces of silver into modern day American dollar, into modern day pounds or euros or South African rand or whichever currency you are in. 50,000 pieces of silver. Find it how much money it could be in the modern days. That's a lot of money. Now, as of now, there are many secret societies of occultic darkness on earth officially operating and propagating the art of white witchcraft. Now, listen to me. In the United States of America, there are various forms of white witchcraft, such as the Gardnerian Covens. There's a class of witchcraft known as the Gardnerian Covens. We have the Sicilian witchcraft. We have what we call the Dianic witchcraft. Dianic from the Diana class of witchcraft. We have the Alexandrian Covens. The societies of witchcraft on earth operate in white witchcraft. They include the societies of earth that operate in white witchcraft today, in our modern day contemporary life today. The societies on earth that operate in white witchcraft are the following, as I will mention. Number one, we have what we call the Church of Satan, which is San Francisco, which is based in San Francisco, United States of America, and it was founded in 1966 by a guy known as Anton LaVey, who is known as the High Priest of Satan, who was the author of the Satanic Bible. The author of the Satanic Bible is called Anton LaVey. And the Church of Satan was founded in 1966 in San Francisco in the United States. The other society that practices white witchcraft in our modern day contemporary society is known as the International Council of White Witches, which had a Nigerian in that council as its general secretary, as its general secretary. So the International Council of White Witches had an African black man who was a Nigerian and he was the general secretary or he was the secretary general. So you can imagine. The other one, which is a society on earth today that practices white witchcraft is called the Royal Order of White Witches that is based in England and it is of England. The other one that practices white witchcraft in today's modern day society is called the Church of Wicca, which is in California, USA, founded by an archbishop by the name of Frost, the Archbishop Frost. This archbishop is the author of the magic art of witchcraft. You can check it out on Google, the magic art of witchcraft. The other society that practices witchcraft on earth is the white uh, it's called the Witchcraft Fraternity of Canada. The research barrier of the Twilight Zone. This is another class of society that practices white witchcraft. They, they call themselves the research barrier of Twilight Zone that is based in Lagos, Nigeria. Now, 
Having said that, let me handle something about a class of witchcraft known as the Kali witchcraft. Kali, K-A-L-I, Kali witchcraft. Now, the art of Kali witchcraft originated in India through the worship of Kali or Duga, who is the oldest female psychic entity of the astral plane, the first occult kingdom of the air. You get me? The first. Kali is the spiritual wife of Nataraja, the dancing astral spirit in charge of destruction. The dancing astral spirit in the charge of destruction is founded commonly among the Indians. When you see these Indians, not all of them though, but a, quite a number, when you see them dance in a way that is not ordinary, is not usual, is beyond the normal human calculation, then be so sure that there is a spirit called the astral spirit that causes him or her to dance in a way that is beyond the human ability. Now, everything relating to Kali witches have to do with destruction. For instance, the art of using human blood for money or using human body parts for rituals is operated by Kali witchcraft or Kali witches in India. And not only India, nowadays Kali witches are all over the world. They are in America, they are in Great Britain, they are in Nigeria, they are in Tanzania, they are in Kenya, they are in Uganda, they are in Somalia, or other Somalia. They are all over the place, Kali witches. I know of some in Kenya here based in Mombasa. I've met a few in my spiritual Christ ascension when I ascend in the heavens when I am praying uh, apostolic governmental prayers in high places while I'm dislodging entities of darkness in the princes of air at night. When I pray, I've met some who have threatened me, but I've been able to bring them down, and today they are under my feet. Glory to Jesus. So these Kali witches, uh, the Kali witchcraft is in full operation all over the world. For instance, in Nigeria, such blood money secret cults operate a combination of black and Kali crafts. It is important to note that a whole nation, a whole nation can be wrecked by witchcraft manipulation if true believers therein are not constantly watchful, sober, and they are not seers in the spirit. That's why we need believers, Christian believers, born again Christian believers who are watchers in the spirit and they are seers in the spirit and they are warriors in the spirit. We need them. Now, another class of witchcraft is called Abramelin witchcraft. Abramelin witchcraft. Now, the art of Rajo witchcraft, also called, as I've said, Abramelin witchcraft. There is an art of witchcraft, an art of witchcraft, sorry, called Raja witchcraft, which is also called in another language, Abra Melin witchcraft. This is the highest category of all the operations of witchcraft. This art originated in ancient Babylon and is still being practiced today in different parts of the world, greater parts of Chinese occult mystery known as Yejin. Y-E-E-J-I-N-G, Yejin. Yejin is the art of Rajo witchcraft. Yejin is the art of Rajo or Abramalin witchcraft that is practiced in China by most Chinese, and they are all over the world, including Kenya. These are the ones that you see. You see, like in Kenya, the Yejin uh, witches are used 
by Chinese government to come in Kenya and build roads. They come in Kenya and they build roads. Every road constructed by Chinese government all over the world, the people they send to construct those roads are witches from the class of witchcraft known as Ye Jing, who practice Rajo witchcraft, also known as Abramelin witchcraft. And that is why we see every time they construct roads, they have to slaughter an animal and the blood is, is poured on the foundation, on the bedrock of the road before they finally place the tarmac. And those are the places that are considered as black spots because when time comes for that ritual to demand blood, you will be so sure we'll have fatal road accidents in different parts of our road network all over the world. That is just to enlighten you. So don't be shocked by these roads that are built by Chinese government that come to construct in Kenya, in all over the world. They practice an Abramalin witchcraft, which is also known as Rajo witchcraft, which in Chinese is called Yejin art of witchcraft. It is the highest category of all operations of witchcraft. It demands human blood. Now, having said that, listen to me. This Rajo or Yejin witchcraft that originates and is practiced by the Chinese people was the first that received from mighty spirits. This was first received from mighty spirits and they are transmitted through oral tradition until the 12th century BC when the first two Chinese emperors, who the first one is called Wen Wang and the other one is called Chao Kung, Wen Wang and Chao Kung, these two first emperors finally compiled the principle of this into renowned occultic books of darkness. From then, such books became the basis of the art of divination in China by these two emperors that came from China. The first one is Emperor Wen Wu, Wen Wang, sorry, Wen Wang, W-E-N, then Wang, W-A-N-G, Wen Wang, and the other one, Emperor, who introduced Rajo witchcraft or Ye Jing witchcraft is called Chao Kung, C-H-O-U, Chao Kung, K-U-N-G. So this divination became part of Chinese. And today, Chinese practice this witchcraft at a very high level. All right? So don't joke with this Chinese you see in Kenya. They know witchcraft at a level Kenyans don't know. That's why I tell people, you don't joke with a Chinese witchcraft called Ye Jing witchcraft or Rajo or rather the Abramelin witchcraft. The witchcraft from Kitui, from Mombasa or from the Swahili people is nothing compared to the Ye Jing witchcraft uh, that is known by the Chinese. This is the highest operation of witchcraft. You don't joke with the Ye Jing kind of a witchcraft involvement. That's why if you steal from a Chinese, you're in great trouble. You will die. They will suck your blood till you are nothing but anatomy full of dry skeletonic bones. Now, apart from the two Chinese emperors, other ascended masters of this level of witchcraft called Abramelin witchcraft include uh, the S.L. MacGregor Mathers, the translator of the sacred magic of Abramelin and is a past master of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, which was the greatest occult society in England in the 19th century. And also another one, a standard master of Abramelin witchcraft that lived is called Aleister Crowley, also from England, founder of the secret society called the Order of the Silver Star, who proclaimed himself to be the great beast. Furthermore, there is a part of the Roscrucian 
mysteries, including the mysteries of the Hebrew occultism. The Hebrew occultism known as Kabbalah. Kabbalah are contained in the art of Rajo witchcraft. The Greek famous oracle of Delphi was a higher aspect of the art of Abramelin. Okay? Abramelin or Rajo witchcraft or Yejin as you know it now. It was through this craft that the witches of Babylon became masters in the art of teraphim and predicting the future, all right, through the livers and intestines of slaughtered beasts. Imagine somebody predicting the future by observing a liver or an intestine of an animal. He can use the liver of an animal or the intestine of an animal and engage those intestines into the future and see what is coming from the future. Imagine you can see into the future through the liver of an animal, through the intestine of an animal. How they do it, I don't know. Don't ask me. I was taught by God this knowledge. I'm just, put, I'm just relaying what I was taught. So you find out by the will of the Holy Spirit how they do it. But I will urge you, don't try this unless you're spiritually matured. Don't try this. This is only for the matured. Don't try to find out how it is done. Okay? As well, they are able to see into the future through smoke, fire, precious stones, or other um, uh, resources of, uh, of, of, of properties they can engage. Now listen to me. The occult art of using vultures the occultic art of using owls, that bird called owl which has big huge eyes, or the occultic uh, art of using dogs, cats, flies, which in Israel is easy, amongst others, to carry witchcraft messages, which is still going on today. Right? It's still going on today. People use this they use vultures, they use owls, they use dogs, cat, flies, uh, gecko, lizards, cockroach to carry witchcraft messages. It's going on today, like here in Mombasa, it's really rampant. You can be in your house and all of a sudden from nowhere, you just see a funny looking lizard gecko on your wall crawling but as you, as you observe it something within your divine impulse tells you this is not a normal lizard gecko walking and crawling on your wall or this is not a normal fly flying around this is not a normal dog barking outside that's not a normal cat meowing outside there and releasing some very demonic occultic hellbound sounding as a cat and you imagine oh what is that and you feel the whole of your body the hairs on your body stand still like steel wool and you wonder what's happened to you that is witchcraft messages being passed across all this originated in babylon and is part of rojo or rather rajo witchcraft even the ancient kings of babylon advanced in rajo wizards in Ezekiel 21, verse 21, listen to me. The Bible says, For the king of Babylon stood at the parting of the way, at the head of two ways, to use divination. The king of Babylon, he stood at the parting of the way, where the ways part, at the junction, where this way goes this way and this way goes this way. He stood at that center, right? At the head of the two ways, to use divination. And listen to what he does. He did. The Bible says, He made his arrows bright. He consulted with images. He looked into the liver. Ezekiel 21, verse 21. He looked inside the liver of an animal. That is divination. That is witchcraft. Using liver. Either human liver or animal liver. 
Listen to me. The occult art, there's another occult art of witchcraft known as necromancy, which is the practice of communicating by magic with the dead in order to learn about the future is part of Rajo witchcraft. Now, necromancy is an occult manipulation practice of darkness because by this art, a psychic entity may disguise himself and appear from the ground or the grave in the form of a dead person and speak to people. It happens. I'm going to say this again. This art, a psychic entity, this is somebody who uses psychic practice, may disguise, may camouflage himself and appear from the ground. People appear from the ground, the earth ground. They appear from the ground or they appear from the grave in the form, disguise of a dead person and speak to people and pretend that it's the dead person who has come from the grave to talk to the living. Well, that is a lie. Every practice of darkness is a camouflage, is a counterfeit. It's not the original. Now, let me say something. A master of Abramalin or Rajo witchcraft or Yejin witchcraft, as it's called in Chinese, can completely influence, dominate, and control others to the end that such people may proclaim or worship him as the great power of God. And it is so much practice among the false prophets and false apostles we have currently today who are modern day charlatans and jackals. And we have lots of them in Kenya. I will not mention their names, but you know them. There are some from Uganda. There's another one in Tanzania. There's another one. There, there are many more in Malawi, in Zimbabwe, in Nigeria, in South Africa. There's one who was in South Africa who claimed to raise the dead. He claimed to raise the dead. You know him. He's in South Africa. But he ran away when the government of South Africa declared a warrant of arrest. He's now in Germany, hiding in Germany. He can't come back to South Africa. But he's a Congolese who, is in, who was based in South Africa. But now he's run away. He's in Germany. Another one was from Zimbabwe. He ran away. He's now in England. Another one was in South Africa, but comes from Malawi. He ran away. Now he's in Malawi. You know them. Now let me say this. We found in the Holy Scripture. Other one is in Kenya, here in Nairobi. And she's a female preacher. And you know her. I will not mention her name. But I've seen her in the realms of the spirit. I've seen her. She's not clean. I've met her in the realms of the spirit. She's aware of what I'm talking about. She can't deny we've met in the spirit. Well, I was ascending by the power of the living Christ Jesus. I met her. I've seen her. But she could not recognize me in the spirit. We find in the Holy Scriptures, the Bible, that this was the same witchcraft. The Abramalim, the Rajo, the Yejing witchcraft was the same art of witchcraft practiced in the Bible. Practiced by a man in the Bible known as Simon of Samaria who was worshipped by people during the time of Apostle Paul, the Apostle of Christ Jesus. In Acts chapter 8 verse 9 to 11, the Bible clearly records and says there was a certain man called Simon which was before time in the same city, used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one to whom they all gave heed.
from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. They believed he was the great power of God. Do you know somebody can operate through witchcraft? Rajo, Abramalin witchcraft. To the level he appears to be using the power of God, but behind the curtain, behind the veil of his life, he is an occultist power of darkness. He's a white witch. A white witch does not mean you have to be white skin. A white witch is anybody. He can be a black man, an African who is using white witchcraft. And black witch can be a white person using black witchcraft. When I say black witch, I don't mean the skin color. I mean the, the practice is originated from the blacks. When I say white witch, I don't mean it's white skin. I mean the practice originates from the white people. Okay? And there's another one who practices that white witchcraft here in Mombasa and he has a huge crowd and people are following him I'll not mention his name you know him so people worship him saying he has the power of God let's continue in Acts 8 9 to 11 the Bible continues to say unto him they had regard because that over a long time he had bewitched them with the sorceries to believe you can be bewitched with sorceries to the extent you believe whatever this witch of a white witch is practicing you think it is from god now listen to me many people especially in my country kenya have paid allegiance to false apostles to false prophets in the kenya to false evangelists who appear as healing apostles, they appear as healing prophets, they appear as healing evangelists, but they are practicing witchcraft behind the seal. But people are too blind to see. And when we talk these things, they think we are tainting the name of innocent preachers. We are not tainting, we talk what we have seen in the spirit. You don't gaze, you don't gaze about this thing. This is not guesswork, this is a reality as it is on the ground. In Swahili, we say up in Kenya, there's a language in Kenya, we say, ground in a semanin. Whatever the ground is saying is true. Like we are now in electioneering period in Kenya. What is the ground saying? Is it Raila or Ruto? The ground. Now listen to me. Quoting the works of the ancient ecclesiastical writers, the Dex Anonated Reference Bible. The Dex, listen to me, there's a Bible called the Dex Annotated Reference Bible stated in its commentary section that this Simon of Samaria claimed that Dex Annotated Reference Bible at the commentary section, it states that this Simon of Samaria who is quoted in Acts 8 verse 9 to 11, it is said that this guy claimed he was the father who gave the law, the Torah, to Moses. He claims he was the father who gave the law to Moses. That he came in the reign of Tiberius in the person as the son. That he descended upon the disciples at Pentecost in flames of fire. He claims that. That he is the one who descended at the apostles on the day of Pentecost in flames of fire. He claims that he was the Messiah, the Paraclete, and the Jupiter. However, Simon was finally subdued by the mighty power of Jesus Christ by the Apostle Paul. Now listen to the word of God to all people in connection to each and every art of witchcraft. Listen to the word of God. Listen to what the word of God is going to say. I'm going to read Leviticus 20 verse 6 as I conclude. Leviticus 20 verse 6, the Bible says, And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits, and the soul that turns after wizards, 
to go whoring. Whoring is prostituting. You can spiritually prostitute. Another word for prostitution, spiritual prostitution is trading. Fanya biashara. Doing business transaction with them in whichever capacity, whether you are going to consult or you are going to seek power or you are going to kill somebody through witchcraft. The Bible says the soul that does that, nafsi na ufanya hivyo. The Bible says the Lord is saying, I will even set my face against that soul. I will cut him from among his people. This is the word of the Lord. Now, precious saint, now you understand witchcraft is real. Manipulations are real. Everything is real. Praise the Lord. Now, allow me to conclude at that. We will continue from where I have left. But this brings me to the end of the teaching series on clairvoyance and occultic powers of darkness that brings about what? That brings about um, all these things. Now having said that, we shall continue with other teaching series and on our next episode, our new upcoming teaching series, I will be engaging on our intro teaching series on the spirituality of finances. This brings us to the end of our teaching series on clairvoyance and occultic powers of manipulative spirits. And we shall embark on our next video live stream on the teaching of spirituality of finances or otherwise we can call it the spirit of money the spirit of money the spirit of finance and i will show you through scriptures how the spirit of money is different from the spirit of mammon i will show you the difference between the spirit of money and the spirit of mammon these are two different things one is from God, the other one is Satan. I will show you. This is your brother host, Joker, the voice of thunders. I want you to understand that when I never I call upon you to support me in any capacity, it is not to enrich myself. It is the work of ministry to advance my online live streaming video channel, Voice of Thunders, as you are watching it now. Allow me bring to your attention that I'm calling upon every one of you, my supporters, my financial kingdom partners, my YouTube subscribers, my viewers, please, I'm calling upon you to support me purchase a device gadget known as Scarlet Solo Studio Set. It's a two-in-two two out USB, two-in-two two generational interface audio coming with a microphone, a condenser, and a headphone. And it is costing at Kenya shillings, 52,000 Kenya shillings. Please support me by this gadget. I'm setting up my live stream studio in my living, in my house, in one of my rooms. It will be specifically for my online teaching live broadcasting on YouTube, on Facebook, and on Instagram. Help me raise a standard for my YouTube live streaming videos and also facebook and instagram and i'll also be coming to i'll be soon launching my channel on periscope so if you're not having a periscope download periscope i'm coming on periscope by the grace of god please also support me by a gadget that i'll be using on my apostolic missions to different places all over the world known as a wireless microphone the wireless microphone that i need is costing at Kenya shillings 30,000 Kenya shillings. And I'm calling upon you to support me in any capacity the grace of God will have. I know people are watching who can be willing to support. So please support and the Lord will richly bless you. If you want to support on the solo, on the Scarlet Solo Studio set out to into generational uh, out of audio interface with a condenser and a microphone and a headphone, 
is costing a Kenya shillings 52,000, 52, 52,000, 52,000 Kenya shillings. And the wireless microphone of 30,000 Kenya shillings. That brings us to a total of 82,000 Kenya shillings. Total of the wireless microphone and the microphone solo scarlet studio condenser. Please contact my end of video ministry online contact details which are appearing at the end of this video. Reach out to me on WhatsApp, on email, on SMS or on direct call. Don't transact or don't transmit your finances for support before you contact me. Contact me first before you transmit your support of finances. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you. Let's meet on our new upcoming teaching series on the spirituality of finances, the spirit of money. This has been and always remains to be your brother, your friend, your host, Joe Kennedy, the voice of thunders. Signing out as always, Todaraba Yahweh Todaraba Lehu. Shalom. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Amen.